I'm Ruth Markwell. I make these little fabric pictures. Um, Folksy have asked me to record my creative life in five, some questions that they've given to me. So the first question is, who are your heroes of craft? And I have chosen Sue Trevor, um, who makes the most amazing jewel-like coloured fabric art. Um, Sue creates some large 3D pieces like a highly patterned watering can, a Kenwood mixer and sewing machine. They're like everyday objects but they're recreated as like a beautiful um, magical fabric art and she also produces small affordable pieces um, in the same wonderful style. They're like bookmarks and needle cases and brooches and they're all in her shop on Folksy. The other person that I've chosen is Debbie Cotham. I hope I'm saying that right. Uh, she is a bear and textile artist and her shop is called Burlescent. She is another of my heroes. Uh, Debbie makes beautiful collectible keepsake bears and dolls um, and textile art. Um, they're all decorated with her lovely hand embroidered designs. They're just beautiful. And I also admire how Debbie has had to cope with some health issues um, that have led her to her fabric art career because I have MS and um, her comment that craft means independence, a sense of self-worth and being able to share my work and skills and that just perfectly sums up how I feel as well. Uh, next question. If someone was at the start of their creative journey, what's the first book about textile art or embroidery that they should pick up? So when I first started my textile craft journey, I was sewing bags as a hobby and I sold a few in a little shop on Folksy called On The Button Bags. Um, it was while I was decorating those bags that I first experimented with fabric art um, just to decorate the bags. <laughs> so the book that I'm going to recommend comes from that time uh, and it's called The Bag Making Bible and it's by Lisa Lam. Uh, it's a lovely book and it's full of photographs and diagrams, project ideas um, and it just really inspires you to, to get sewing and make things. Next question. Tell us one thing that you bought on Folksy and why it's special to you. So um, hanging in our kitchen, well it's not in the kitchen at the moment, but hanging in our kitchen we have a lovely little robin which is made by Georgie Ashton and her shop is called Rings and Things, Rings and Things Design and that is on Folksy. It's, uh, it's got glass beads for its red breast and, and the wire is just so beautifully and precisely twisted. It's just a really fabulous piece and um, it's something that you would like buy for a gift but then you want to keep it for yourself. Who would you recommend people follow on social media within your field? for inspiration. So I'm going to say the work of uh, needle and thread artist Rosa Andreeva. And Andreeva? Um, she has Russian uh, and she's pretty inspiring. Um, but generally the people that I do follow on social media are from the wider crafting and art community. Um, like the quirky and unusual art that's shown on Instagram account arthunter.me um, and I love the sweet ceramics of p pottery. P.U. pottery is how it is. Uh, it's just really nice. It lots how to see the work in progress, how it's shown, and how it's marketed in videos. And I think finally, yes, what is the handmade object of desire that you most lust after in the world? So I would like one of the beautiful animals or birds pieces that's made by the Northumbrian needle felt artist Katie Corrigan and her partner Simon Brown um, is the gentleman felter. Um, Katie is on Instagram sprawling puppy. <laughs> um, the animals that they make and create are just truly works of art and they're full of personality and humour. Um, I would love to have one of their little foxes on a scrubbing brush or a lovely little robin that is sitting on a letterpress piece, which is beautiful. Thank you.